Hi folks, Dave back with you from No Fixed Address, flying solo this week. Um, in this video I'm going to show you how we converted our trailer from electric drum brakes to hydraulic disc brakes. Some of you will have seen our video that we did a while back where we gave you a tour of our Momentum 397TH and in that video we said we loved the trailer and that's true. What we didn't talk about though in that video are the brakes and I gotta say that is one thing in the trailer I just do not like at all. Um, the trailer is heavy. When it's fully loaded we're close to 20,000 pounds and so you rely on those brakes always and you have to be able to rely on them and I'm finding that I can't. Uh, sometimes they seem to work quite well and sometimes not so well. So I've decided that for peace of mind and safety that we will convert from the uh, electric drum brakes to hydraulic disc brakes. Um, so this is going to be a three-part video. In the first one I'm going to go over the system, show you the components we purchased and uh, give you a brief idea of how they all fit together. Um, and we will install the hydraulic pump in this video as well. In the next video, I'll go over how to install the uh, brake lines. And in the third video, we'll install the actual disc brakes, remove the old drum brakes off the trailer and, and install the new disc brakes. So come on along. Let's start by looking at what I purchased. I've laid all of the uh, components and tools and stuff that I'm going to need out on the rear deck on the trailer. Um, the, whole, the heart of the system itself is the electric hydraulic pump. And what this does is convert the brake signal from your truck uh, into hydraulic pressure to run the brakes. So whereas with your electric brakes, the more you apply your brake pedal, the higher the voltage on the brake signal going to the trailer, the stronger it puts the brakes on. Here that higher voltage makes the pump drive higher pressure, which in turn applies the brakes more firmly. Um, I chose this MHBA 16, 1600 PSI pump, and that's good enough for, was well, plenty good enough actually for uh, six brakes. Now we have a tri-axle here. If you have fewer axles, then a lighter duty pump uh, would be in order for you. I also had to purchase additional wire to uh, connect this into the trailer uh, and some various connectors and a, a 30 amp uh, self-resetting circuit breaker as well. Next up we have brake lines. So these, I bought this uh, rubber brake line kit uh, this kit is designed for a tri-axle trailer, uh, but you can get them for dual axles and single axles as well. I chose to go with the flexible rubber just because it's easier to manage than uh, the rigid uh, metal tubing, especially for a DIY project done on the road. Um, I don't have to be on the road right now. We are currently uh, stationary due to the uh, travel restrictions, but uh, uh, I'm gonna show you how you can do this whole thing with minimal tools and you could do it anywhere in any sort of campground as long as you have enough time to, to do it. The brake line kit comes with uh, little clips for attaching the brake line to the underside of your trailer. Um, and like I said, that'll be video number two in this series where we'll install all of that. The rest of the system here has to do with the actual brakes on the trailer itself. That consists of the actual uh, disc brake caliper, a new uh, disc and hub assembly, and a bracket that holds the disc caliper. You're also going to need inner and outer bearings and a seal. And one thing I hadn't counted on was that I was going to need new wheel nuts as well. The studs 
on these are 9 16 inch and what was on the trailer was half inch so as it turned out I had to buy all new uh, wheel nuts as well and they aren't inexpensive unfortunately so this is above the generator and uh, we've previously put this piece of plywood on here because we store toilet paper and other light things up here um, but I think I'm going to mount the hydraulic pump way at the far end of it in there. It's out of the way for storing stuff here, which is good. Uh, not so good that it makes it harder to check the uh, brake fluid level in it, but it's manageable. Uh, initially I was thinking I would mount it up at this corner here, but I'm reserving space here and to the right over there for additional solar equipment in the future. So I don't want to impinge upon the space that I need for that. So I think this makes the most amount of sense to put it back up in here. So I need to drill two holes there, two holes there, and I'll attach it with some 5 16 inch hardware. I've got the hydraulic pump fastened down there now with four 5 16 inch bolts, and I used nylock nuts on the other side so that they won't vibrate off as we're rolling down the road in this continuous earthquake. So now let's get these wires hooked up. I have to route the yellow and the blue wire from the pump up to the pin box. Um, the blue wire is uh, the signal from the truck, from the brake controller in the truck, and the yellow wire will go to the emergency brake switch so that uh, if the trailer detaches from the truck that gets pulled and it automatically applies the brakes on the trailer. So I've got to fish these two wires, a yellow and a blue one, up through the front of the trailer to the pin box from inside the generator compartment here. In order to do that I'm going to loosen some of the screws that's holding the underside cover on here and then I'm going to use this piece of rigid wire, shove it through there along the very bottom edge, avoiding the insulation, so that then I can pull the wires back through. Just backing them off about a quarter of an inch. I should be able to fish the wire through now. Got it. Now I'll just tape the ends of the yellow and blue wire to the end of that and pull them through. Well, it's probably hard to see, but there's the uh, two wires taped to the uh, rigid wire that I'm using as a fish tape. And I've also decided to send through a string just in case in the future I need to pull another wire up through there. This will make it a lot easier. I should have done that back when I routed the video cables for our wired four camera video system up to the pin box, uh, but I guess I forgot in the haste of filming that. Speaking of which, if you want to see how we did install a four camera video system on our trailer, I'll leave a link above and in the description below. There we go. So what I found when I opened up this junction box here is that the blue wire coming from the seven-way harness, which is the brake controller signal, went into a bundle of wires, two of which, the orange and blue, go back to the trailer. So those would be the <clears throat> those would be going to the brakes, the electric brakes. And also in that same bundle was a black wire coming from the breakaway switch. So that would be the cold side of the breakaway switch. So I took that cold side of the breakaway switch and the blue wire from the harness out of that bundle. I have I've terminated 
the two wires that go back to the current electric brakes because we're not going to use them anymore. And I've attached the cold side of the breakaway switch to the yellow wire that I just pulled in here. And I've connected the blue wire from the seven-way harness to the blue wire that I've pulled into here. Now we need to test to make sure that the voltages are making it to the other end of this by applying the brakes and also pulling the breakaway switch. So I've got uh, the positive lead on my digital voltmeter hooked up to the yellow line right now and I've just attached the negative to the negative battery post so that I'll have a ground there and we're going to watch this meter as I pull the breakaway pin. I'm going to remove the breakaway pin now and there you can see the voltage jump up. Put it back in. Voltage goes back down. So that's working great. I've switched the voltmeter over to the blue wire now. I've got Janice in the truck. She's going to apply the brakes using the manual override on the brake controller. And we will watch to see here what happens on the voltmeter. Okay, go ahead, fully apply. And release. Now halfway. And release. So that looks good. We got high voltage when she fully applied and lower when it was only half applied. So that looks good. All right, thank you. I've used some yellow butt connectors to splice the wires together here. Now I'm going to put heat shrink over top of them. There, I've got the yellow and blue wire neatly zip tied up along there. And then the heat shrink on the connections. Then down the outer wall and into the pump. Now i got to do power and ground. Okay, fast forward. I've got the positive and negative run around there, zip tied to the wall, back along here. There I've put the 30 amp automatic resetting circuit breaker. It runs along here, negative goes into the negative bus here. Positive will go onto this terminal, but I'm not going to hook that up right now. I'll hook that up right at the end when I'm ready to test the system. So that pretty much is it as far as installing the hydraulic pump goes. There's a look at the tools that I used for this part of the job. Nothing special there. Digital voltmeter maybe is the only special thing some people might not have, but those things can be picked up for under $20 at Harbor Freight or Princess Auto, places like that. You don't need anything fancy to do this. So that pretty much wraps up the installation of the hydraulic pump. As you can see, it was a pretty straightforward process. Um, pretty easy to do. Just follow the instructions. You got four wires to connect. The most difficult part is figuring out which wires uh, in the pin box you have to connect to. But with, uh, if you follow along what I did, then uh, you should have no problem with that. So that ends part one of this three-part series. In the next episode, we will install the hydraulic lines. And in the one after that, the final episode, we'll install the actual disc brakes, get the whole system up and running. So if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit that little notification bell as well so that you'll get a notification when we release the next part in this series, which should be about 10 days from now. Thanks for joining me.